says journalists are all cynics? Who says we only like the bad news? Today we were all cheerleaders for discovery. Good evening again from Cape Canaveral. We'll probably always remember we were when discovery took off. Let's relive the final countdown. All of you watched it across the USA. T minus 31 seconds. We have a goal for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers have assumed. T minus 23 seconds and counting. The SRB nozzle profile. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Our goal for main engine start. Seven, six, start. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff. America returns to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll, Graham Houston now controlling. Three engines at 104 percent. And now. In the wee hours of the morning, shuttle fans came by the thousands. Where y'all from? New York City. Did you come all the way to see one? We just came sure in this did. last night. Yeah, just come in and see it. Slept yeah. here all night long. They came to see the dawn of America return to space. This launch left for 1059 now is still marginal. We have one they watched TV news reports hanging on to every word, and they waited. 32 months after the terrible Chincher tragedy, the wait for thousands of spectators finally paid off. <laughs> As Discovery roared in view, the crowd on the beach cheered. In town, thousands more did the exact same thing. I thought it was great. Finally, for once, we can tell the rest of the world we're still number one. It was fantastic. It was great. Yeah, great. yeah really pleased. <laughs> it was worth the trip from San Diego? Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Maria Ross says even her unborn baby knew these sights and sounds were special. Do you think your baby knows? Yeah. Definitely. It was kicking like mad. <laughs> Ed Trotsky for CBS News, Port Canaveral, Florida. What time did you get? Midnight. Midnight? Uh -huh. Throughout the early morning hours, Central Floridian tourists gathered along his one preparing to view the launch. Jennifer Weber and Chris Christensen were here from Apopka. What time did you guys get here? About four o'clock. Four o'clock? You have to be able to sleep? In the traffic. Too, too much commotion going on. Camping out here to see the launch for the first time, Dave and Jill Lee from our city. Also with them, their children, 11-year-old Karen and 3-year-old Jonathan. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it happen. At about 7 a.m. this morning, dawn, and the word of a one-hour delay. Any disappointment now? The first delay here for the first hour? None. We're here for the liftoff. As the hours passed and the sun broke through the clouds, the crowd here along US-1 grew. Many passed time by listening to shuttle launch control being broadcast on a little radio station. They are in the process uh, of evaluating whether that is a problem or not. Others here dreamed about becoming an astronaut, including four-year-old Ern Vandewerf from Lake Worth, ready for blast-off. Can I go up into the sky and the whole Earth will shake? By 11.20 this morning, the Lees were standing and ready for launch. Is nervous at all? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and with liftoff, there were cheers coming from all directions, including, you bet, the Lees. Oh, God. look at John Love! He's going! Yeah. Look! Yeah. He's going! All right! Get up there! All right! Oh. Yeah. Bob Sekoler for CBS News, Titus, Florida. It was the moment thousands of Space Center workers had been hoping for. How are we ready? Yes. We've waited all the time for this one. Yes. I couldn't even sleep last night. As the seconds ticked to zero and Discovery roared to life, the workers literally jumped for joy. They breathed a sigh of relief as the shuttle climbed high, performing as planned. It's great. Just want to make sure it's up there. We went through Challenger. We're looking forward to it so much. Uh, it's a big load off our shoulders. Thank God. Spirits were also soaring at the VIP viewing site six miles away. All eyes were on the sky, and when Discovery lifted off, some screamed. Hey! 
while loved ones hugged each other. At the beginning, we can look to the future instead of looking behind us. It was just a great, it was a thrill. Capturing the scene on canvas was artist Chet Jezgierski. I mean, my heart's still pounding just like everybody else. The thing is, it's, it's a test to control yourself and to be able to do something worthwhile while that's going. Most agree it was a day they would never forget. Bob Tucker, CBS News, the Kitty Space Center. The dawn marked a new day in space shuttle history. Thousands camped along Cape Canaveral shore any way they could, with family and man's best friends, all to see Discovery launched into orbit on its seventh mission, the first since Challenger's fatal explosion two and a half years ago. The things they did back then compared to they left their safety behind and they they installed it this time. It's a feel of excitement. Everybody is partying and having a great time. And the weather's beautiful. The sunset is so beautiful this morning. Some parents question whether to let children watch case of another tragedy. Pat Mill chose to make the launch a learning experience for his kids. We talked uh, about the Challenger and, and uh, the problems that it happened and uh, tried to explain to them that uh, to be without any, any hitches. This time, NASA didn't take chances, lifting off one hour, 38 minutes later than scheduled. The pressure mounted. Traffic jam and board didn't seem to matter. The hope now is that Discovery will continue its four-day journey as successfully as it began, moving to these people who helped port it. Space exploration will continue. At Cape Canaveral Shores, I'm Lori Brown for Channel 6 Eyewitness News. Two. Now that we have this, uh, we, we show that the system does work again now, and we're ready to go. Now we can get on with the research, and I think a great step uh, toward getting packing for the program. I'm quite happy today. It was a great flight, a uh, little delay because of the, the winds aloft that were not programmed into the program today, but uh, it was a great flight. Haven't been so excited since my own launch. I could feel, I could taste it. I had goosebumps, it certainly wasn't cold, and I had some tears in my eyes. It was an emotional experience for me, just excitement after all the struggle and all the problems to see such a beautiful, successful launch the first time they set it up. Two and a half years, we've been in a real drought. Where does this take us now? Well, this takes us to the next flight. Hopefully, within a couple of months, we'll fly again, and we'll get back to a more regular flight schedule, and we'll get on with building a permanently orbiting space station where we can do a lot of science, a lot of research and development to produce uh, untold benefits for mankind. Look at him. See the thing coming? See right there? No. No, come down. Down below the phone. See? Thank you. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. Now, unless someone else has broken the, the news already, before we begin, I'd like to tell you that at 11.37, the Space Shuttle Discovery lifted off at the Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> now headed into orbit, and America is back in space. We're now looking forward to the successful completion of the mission and the return of her five-member crew. We 
We salute the bravery of Rick Hawk, Dick Covey, Pinky Nelson, Mick, Mike Lounge, and Davers, and we ask God to bless this important voyage. They sure were considerate in their timing. Just gave me time to get out here without being late. And, well, and looking down the list of what all your organizations have done, I have to say you are America's good Samaritans, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the White House. It did did require Goosebumps from it. It was incredible. I mean, it, it, where we were here on the jetty, it was just so close. It was amazing. I think it's just great. I think it's wonderful for America to have the, uh, the success that it deserves. Every second worth the trip. Take time off from work. Every second worth it. You think it would get off today? Yes, I knew it would. Oh, I, you, I, I know. <laughs> it's fantastic. Every second worth it. One minute, velocity 2300 feet per second, altitude 500 nautical miles, downrange distance nautical miles. Discovery, go around up. Discovery given a go at throttle up, 3 engines, 104%, velocity 3200 feet per second, altitude 10.8 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. seconds from solid rocket booster operation. Now. I got the same look. 
mood it must have been tremendous when I think about it. Was. It, was, it was real nice. This is a great, great way to get back in, back into the business. Right. What's your name? Jim. Well, it was a very normal, very smooth count, and then when we got main ignition, uh, I saw a lot of smiles. When we got ignition at solid rocket motor, there were some cheers, and then the motor separated uh, after they did their job. It was uh, a big event, and then Miko, main engine off, uh, capped a great 10 minutes. All major milestones. Was booster separation, was that big for you? Was there one point that you were looking for in the S stage? Uh, I think looking more for booster ignition. Then I knew we were on our way. Seventh and eighth graders at Ron McNair Junior High School took a moment to remember their hometown hero. Surrounded by the former teacher astronauts, name memorabilia gives these two cause for reflection of the space shuttle's tragic attempt. Cook was a librarian when McNair was graduated from here in 1967 and says she will never forget the day Challenger exploded. I have flashbacks. It was very vivid of what happened to him. The students from this small town that's to call itself the home Ronald McNair also remember the 1986 Challenger disaster that hit close to home. And watching Discovery's countdown and launch in a science classroom sat still with the Challenger on their minds. While watching history in the making as the Discovery Shell took off from Earth, all eyes tied to the TV, but there were no birth cheers from this 8th grade classroom. What the last year, why she's been having last year, now they're about to have a blue thing. And then they still believe about them. And as the shuttle built up speed to ultimately reach 17,000 miles an hour to orbit in space, students at Ron McNair Junior High School discovered today's launch a success. Holly O'Neill, TV7 News, Columbia.